in your role as a town councillor, if you just talk to me, what you say, what you've been talking about about the the management plan, the coastal management plan, and anything to do with how the the coastal changes affect the community of Horns in particular. I know you have a wider view as well. So anything yeah. you'd like to contribute to that argument, please? Well, I think if we look back in history, um, Hornsey has always been um, threatened by the sea, I would suppose. I mean, back in time, we've lost villages into the sea, lost Hornsey Burton. Um, and even if you go back to postcards in the early 1900s, there's a particularly good one you might find, which is uh, an example of the upper promenade near where the floral hall was to have been built, where it's actually gouged out by a, by an, a great storm, and it's all just mud. It's just like clay, and so obviously the time came to build proper defences, and that was undertaken by the then Hornsey Urban District Council. But uh, as time progressed, and if you come to the time when I was actually involved with it. Uh, that was the time when we saw the South Promenade being um, done up, as it were. Um, when we had that walk down there, you'd have seen the plaque on the wall. And I was at the opening of that, um, which was back in 1981, I think. I, again, I'm probably wrong with the date. But it doesn't matter. I mean, history is not an exact science. Somebody, there'll be various accounts of it, so I don't worry about it. I mean, uh, if you're off air at the moment, uh, I don't know if you've come across the, the Chronicle. No, is Chron that the Chronicles of Hornsey. No, it's uh, Chronicles of Hornsey. It's a com uh, oh, four that. separate booklets, each covering twenty-five years. Uh, you can get them at the, at the museum. Uh, I'll get to the museum. Afterwards. Compiled by a guy called Michael Sewell, who is now dead, unfortunately. But it's very interesting because what he's done is used all the local newspapers and parish council records and that sort of stuff, and he's compiled a, a chronicle of Hornsey, which has everything date-wise that you need to know, really. And in the year 2000, it's even got me. Ah, <laughs> there you go. That's the, that's the reason for buying it. So oh, absolutely. We're going after this to have, meet Stuart, who's the Oh, Stuart, Stuart Walker? Yeah. He'll keep you for hours. Oh, right, OK. Yeah, he's great. Oh, good. I like Stuart. <laughs> Excellent. Um, where was I? So the, the, the coastal defence oh, improvements. Oh, yes, the, the, the defence improvements uh, that I was indirectly involved with. I was on the Borough Council, which did them. It was a firm called Posford Du Vivia who designed them. And uh, we had a big party in the Marine Hotel after that at the Stringer's Restaurant. Uh, that was when the Marine was in the benevolent hands of Tony and uh, Jen Myers, who were very good landlords, uh, landlord and landlady. And that demonstrated, if you like, the um, continued threat from the sea and the need to protect. And this was heightened uh, in everybody's mind around about uh, 2000, uh, when the sea did actually overtop at the bottom of New Road, ran down New Road and got halfway up the hill towards Railway Street. I know this because uh, it was snowing, it was New Year's Day I think that we looked at this, and you could see where the water had gone up and it cut off about what, 10 feet below Railway Street. And so all those houses down there in New Road were flooded. The Swiss Cottage, the pub which I eventually took over, that was flooded. Uh, and this was due to a combination of circumstances, what you might call the perfect storm, I suppose. But of course that did concentrate people's minds somewhat as to what could happen. Um, not so long after that, uh, a new seawall was built at the bottom of a new road with floodgates. No, actually I'm telling you a lie. That seawall was in place, but the floodgates were either left open, possible theory, or it was just overtopped. Uh, and so following that event, um, certain actions took place, including a big storm drain, which is fitted, um, again, looking out of the Swiss Cottage to the right, and in the car park area, it's a big grating. And if a certain volume of water hits that, it takes it away. And I've seen that, actually, with um, rainwater flooding, when New Road was flooded. And it got to a point where I thought, oh, it's going to access the pub. And then suddenly it just went, and that just went. So I'm probably getting the chron chronology a bit mixed no, up here. No, that doesn't matter at all. Uh, because things have happened down there. Uh, there was a slope which went down to the beach. Um, that was being removed because that allowed the water just to cascade up. Uh, I remember that slope very well, actually. I was 
very young at the time, I was going down to the beach on my bike and I was perched on the top of the slope. I had a trowel in one hand because I was going to have a dig in the peat, which is exposed when the sand is scoured away. Uh, it's the bed of the second mere. Uh, it used to be several mirrors. And um, my back brake pedal, uh, back brake cable went on my bike and I went head over heels and landed on the peat with my bike on top of me, which was rather fun. However, um, I'm waffling now. No, it's okay, waffle away. Uh, coming back to the East Riding, uh, more up to date if you like, the Shoreline Management Plan, um, which has been produced by Mike Ball of the East Riding and the wonderfully named Jeremy Pickles, who you've met. Uh, that um, looks at how the coastal um, process takes place and what needs to be done to ensure that um, Lincolnshire doesn't disappear underwater. Uh, that's my take on it. They'll probably tell you something different. But effectively, we need to maintain the longshore drift down the coast. And there are selected settlements, such as Hornsey, which will be protected from the sea not just from front to assault, but as the rest of the cliffs go down on each side from flanking. Because obviously we have the highest rate of erosion in the country. Uh, and at some point Hornsey will end up being almost like a peninsula. Interesting. So um, what sort of time scale are you, are, you, are you talking about with that? Oh, a long time. It's not going to happen next year. Although sometimes you think, oh cracky, you could... It'll be 100 years, 200 years, but at some point Hornsey will be sticking out like a sore thumb and plans have to be put into place to to counteract the flanking. So can you explain to me the the um, the importance of of not just stopping the movement of the beach but allowing the longshore drift to to occur? Why do you have to do that? Well, it, it, it would appear that... Um, Lincolnshire is equally, if not more, at risk of flooding than we are. And as the material moves down the coast, somehow it magically crosses the Humber, which I find interesting, and then gets deposited on the other bank in, in over the water, as we say, over the Humber uh, in Lincolnshire. And this is a process which is very important, apparently. Um, you can see the effect of um, when you put defences up all the way down the coast. As, as you saw at the end of Hornsey's defences, there's a, a cove which is dug into the cliff. And that's due to a swirl effect as the water hits the defence and comes around it and then goes down the coast. Um, so Hornsey has defences, Mappleton has a defence, which I think you've seen, and also Withensea has. But of course these things cost money and they need to be maintained. And So is that likely to be affected by the current economic situation we find ourselves in? I mean, I suppose that's a no-brainer question, really, don't you? Oh, I'll allow you to draw your own inference from that, I think. <laughs> yeah. um, very political answer. Yeah, I imagine but so. With, 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 um, with all the different government groups, and uh, these are the people who are saying, leave it be and let nature take its course. Uh, except for your protected areas where a need has been identified. That's that seems to be the way of of things now. It's not intervene, in, you know, not putting in intervention too yeah. much because it can cause problems elsewhere. You you, you, you get the knock on effects. <coughs> uh, what um, uh, what's a, are you aware of what the effects are on communities either side of Hornsey? Because as you say, you'll you're going to be protected. But what about those? Oh, how are yeah. I? I mean, uh, if you go up to Skipsa, um, there they've lost a road. Um, houses have been marooned on land, so there's only a path to go to them. Uh, if you um, go down to Mappleton, uh, the main road to Mappleton comes perilously close to the sea. Obviously, everybody's well aware of it at the council. They they say yes, it's, it hasn't moved for a while, so you know you don't need to worry too much. But it does look horrifically close when you're driving down there. Uh, the communities, uh, if you like, are, I hesitate to use the word are used to it. Uh, they they understand it, um, and you'll be speaking to people who have been relocated through the Pathfinder project. Um, 
because their houses have lost their value and in fact are falling into the sea. In fact, further up the coast in Scarborough, um, which is admittedly out of your area, but uh, there's actually a gentleman, I don't know if he's still there, but he purchased a house which was due to collapse into the sea for the purpose of creating um, an artistic impression of what it was like living on the edge. But that's what the people on the coast are, that they are <coughs> living on the edge, literally. And you don't know how much of the coast is going to go at any one point, because it, it doesn't sort of go an inch at a time. It goes either none or two metres. And it, it just slips and crashes down to the beach. And if you happen to be walking on the beach at the same time, you can get into trouble. Uh, people don't realise this when they're walking along enjoying themselves. You know, they'll, they'll camp under an overhang of boulder clay and they won't realise that that will come down. It has happened. In uh, the have past. there been issues? Have yes. people been hurt or yeah. killed? Or there has been an occasion when people have been sort of um, buried. Um, I know it's difficult to project a hundred years' time, but say in the next 30, 40, 50 years, is, are things going to change dramatically or is it has that been planned for? If it has been planned for. If you have a word of Mark Moore, He'll show you the shoreline management plan. There's a map with various lines on it showing the predicted um, way in which it's going. Now, like I said, you can't fully predict because you don't know whether it's going to be a metre or three metres. You don't know whether it's going to be a really wet winter, whether land drainage is going to force the cliff to crack and fall down, or indeed whether the sea level is going to increase due to the... Um, much and I guess <clears throat> on a day like today where they're forecasting terrific storms that could have an impact in a very short time after a very dry yep, month. Yeah, could do. I mean you've got cracking on the cliffs at the moment, get a load of water into those cracks and off you go. It, it's not unheard of. Um, and of course with the um, recent apparent changes in the climate with these torrential storms and floods and all the rest of it you just don't really know where you stand. I mean, again, going back into the... Well, before Hornsey was built, if you like, this area was just an area of mirrors surmounted with the occasional hump. And so it's just going back to where it was, if you like. Mm -hmm. The trouble is that people built on it, and mm -hmm. we live here, and we would prefer to live on dry land, if, if at all possible. So was, a, was land drained here? It must have been drained. The mirrors were drained, were they, too? Good, the... Very good question, Peter. I mean, I don't. I, I read it somewhere. The only reason I said that is because over the water in a, a lot of Lincolnshire, a lot of that, of course, is reclaimed yeah. land, isn't it? The Isle of Axe and all that. Yeah. I, I, well, there's <coughs> a, an area further down the coast, coast called Sunk Island, which would in, in, in indicate that that's been reclaimed in some way. Yeah. And we do have a, a very a large network of drains and, and the like. So maybe reclamation took place at some point. I'm not aware of it. All I'm aware of is that we have basically a very damp area and a, a lot of drains, which in terms of pressure have a tendency to overflow and flood people, putting it bluntly. And finally, um, what is the character of the people here that just makes them accept this rather you know, extreme way of, of uh, living, if you like, is it, in terms of... In the next 20 years, they could lose their home, a lot of them, or there could be massive changes to the community because of something you just cannot stop. What is it about the people here? Well, it depends upon people. I'm going to be a bit controversial, I suppose. That's OK. Um, your, your locals um, know the score and will plan accordingly. Your incomers might buy a house, but they've been assured by the state agent will be there for another 50 years, then suddenly discover it's going to go in five years, and probably start asking people, what are you going to do about it? Uh, and that, that is a problem which um, I don't really know what the answer is. Uh, but with um, the people who've lived here, I mean, you know what it's like, and you, to an extent, accept it. Um, you've got people who have lost everything and not through their own fault. And that is a tragedy of the coast. But effectively, I suppose, Yorkshire Phlegm and all that, I don't know. But it is a, a pragmatic acceptance of this is where we live, this is how it works, this is how it happens. And this is where the town council and the surrounding Yorkshire council 
can plug into the, the feelings of the people and hopefully assuage concern and also look at ways in which they can help those who have been unfortunate enough to be afflicted by it. It's not easy, there's not enough money. Uh, you can't fly in the face of government um, diktat. You have to live with it. Um, that's about all I need to say on that. That's on fine. That, on that particular That's act. fine. I mean, what, what I was going to say, is there anything else that I haven't asked you or that you want to particularly cover? About yeah, this. Uh, the, the, there is, the, there are other aspects, um, as opposed to the the threat of the Ogin, the threat of the sea. Um, believe you me, if you come down here in the winter, you will see some phenomenal sights. I mean, it is absolutely amazing. You see the, the sea going up and above the height of the lampposts and the promenade. Uh, you'll see the area where the new sea wall is with the floodgates absolutely full of water. You'll see the sea crashing up at the Marine Hotel. When Jen and Tony Myers had the Marine, they used to say it was interesting because when the sea was high, the whole building shook because it's built on Boulder Clay. So you, you've got your, your threat and you, you've got your horrors, if you like, uh, because it has claimed many, many, many lives. But you've also got the tourist aspect. When you come on a balmy summer day, the sea is lapping upon the shore, it's just like a, a lake. And that was what inspired, if you like, people from Hull to come and live in Hornsey via the railway, the newly built railway. And that's when Mr Wade built his pier, which was six months later demolished by a ship, which was rather unfortunate. So you've, you've got the contradictory nature, if you like. You've, you've got the sea as a threat, as a, as a foe. You've also got the sea as a friend, as something which encourages people to come, to boost the local economy, people to go out to fish. So it, it, it's, it's a balancing act, if you like, Peter. It's, it's, a, it's, a, way, it's a way of life, acknowledging and recognising you know, the threat of the sea. Hence, you've got people like Hornsey Rescue, who are ready and able any time, any day, to go out and help people. We've also got the beauty of it, the, 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 the beach, the, the seaside type stuff, ice creams with sand in them and all that. So it's, it's a dichotomy, if you like. And I suppose we all have to live with that and love it in one way or another. That's a nice little quote at the end there.